Welcome to SelfDiscoveryRadio.com, where the orchard of wisdom is just ready for picking. We celebrate your why, the journey that you've taken that inspires someone else. We support your services. We support your story. Come and be our guest. Become a host. Be an author with us. Come and see what we've got. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Sarah's View of Life. I'm your host, Sarah Troy. I'm going to be sharing with you today some Christmas ideas, and the ideas that I'm bringing about today are on books. These are some of the authors that I have actually um, interviewed, uh, some of the books I have actually read, some of them I've skimmed through, some I haven't had the privilege of, but the actual interview and the story from the person really did resonate with me. And I want you to really consider giving books as a gift because it's something that keeps on giving. It's something that you can read once, you can read again, or you can read and pass it on and discuss it with other people, what they got out of it, what you got out of it. There's a revelation in it. There's an understanding in it. Or there's just purely for the escapism and the journey. It's just really kind of quite wonderful. But most of these books are stories that people have written either about themselves or their work or their calling. And so they're motivational books, inspirational books. And um, I invite you to go to selfdiscoveryradiotv.com under Sarah's View of Life. Look at Books for Giving this season, and you'll see the list of the books that I have here that I'm going to share with you today, and the links that go back to their correlating show where you could buy the books and hear the story more in depth. So here's a book that I have read very recently, and one that really does move me. And this man moves me because it's Rob Shear. I had him on uh, first with the comfort cases that he does for foster children and giving them dignity to have their own backpacks instead of black garbage bags as they're shunted from one house to another. And the next time it was a follow-up on that where he had been on Ellen DeGeneres and received $50,000, which they put into suitcases and looking to start a university for foster kids. And then this third one was the book that he wrote of his life's journey uh, to where he is now, which is a gay married white man who adopted four black children, the journey into doing that, but most importantly, the life that he had growing up, which was full of abuse, abuse in every way that you never want to hear a child has to go through, yet how he came through it, the struggles, the journey that he took to finding love, and then with his partner giving a loving forever family for um, these wonderful children and the work that he's doing for other foster children. So it's the forever family by Rob Shear and please do listen to his shows. I promise you, he will move you. Um, here's another one. Um, Echo and Romaldi by Scott Husing. When I first interviewed Scott, it was before the book came out. And it's what went on in, in 10 months in Romaldi, you know, with his comrades as a veteran, the stress that they were under, the story, um, the courage, the losses, and, but the gain of each other. And I had him on a second time where it was the response to the story and how the book had moved so many veterans and veterans' parents who had lost their children and how it gave them a sense of connection. And it has turned out that this book has been something that has given him something so much more than he ever thought of. So there's Echo in Romaldi by Scott Husing. And then there's a, another one that I really enjoyed the show with. I really enjoyed the book. And I have two more books from him that I'm going to be reading. And it's The Missing Piece by Bud Brownton. And it had a, a profound effect on me because it was a reminder I knew this stuff, but it was a reminder to reconnect. And it starts off with a metaphorical um, story of a kid and his grandfather who are putting a puzzle together and there's a missing piece and what that meant for life. And then it goes on to kind of his discovery, his self-discovery and um, into his own journey and to his own teachings and um, a really wonderful book, The Missing Piece, plus he has others. Then, of course... There's Kid Zoom, the Vegan Kid uh, by Gillian Megan Walters, the mother of, uh, of the Zoom Kid. 
and I interviewed both him and her on their veganism um, activism, where they fight for the rights of others. I also interviewed Gillian on the book because it's all her artistry and the story is around her son being an activist so young and his passion for, for animals everywhere. And it makes a beautiful book uh, to give to everyone. In fact, actually, for those that are on video, I can show you and you can see for yourself how beautifully illustrated it is. Um, it's a little bright here, but, and that's that vegan kid there and all the animals around him. And, and of course the white dog had to be in the show as well. And it's all about, you know, the sea life. It's a wonderful way of um, educating children on veganism and, and how to love our animals to so stand up for them instead of looking at them as a diet. So I highly recommend the book and it's a wonderful way of introducing your children to that world. Now, another book is The Three Rooms, Change Your Thoughts to Change Your Life by Kevin Murphy. And it's what room are you in? Uh, the room in which you're in, your thoughts will reside, will determine the quality of your business success, personal relationships, happiness, and more. And it's recognizing your three rooms of um, where you are in your thought process, because that's how you're going to interact. That is how you're going to be perceived. That's how you're going to take action. And a wonderful interview, very logical, and made a great deal of sense, and I highly do recommend it. Now, this is another one. This one is for children. And I do recommend this one as well, most certainly. And it's Seeds and Trees by Brandon Weldon. And it's Seeds and Trees. It's a beautifully illustrated story about the power of words that we speak to our children. And it's taken on a storyline, but it is the impact of our words. We're inclined to throw our words away. And we don't pay attention to the depth and the understanding of what those words can mean to our children or the perception they take those words on and use them themselves. And, you know, actions speak louder than words, but words stay in the memory and they're reused and are they used in the right contents or not. And another beautifully illustrated book, um, a wonderful interview, such a warm person, and I highly recommend this. It's a beautiful one for grandparents and parents to read to their children, for the children to look through, and a wonderful thought-provoking story, Seeds and Trees by Brandon Weldon. And I have another book here, which I did a couple of years ago, but I really like this gentleman. And it's very, very simple. It's just two choices. And the interesting thing about this, and of course, it's a nice colorful book. You know, a lot of times things come in black and things like that, which I do like to see the color. And it's illustrated in there of logics. Now, he is a pilot, but he also mentors children. And he realized while he was mentoring the children about choices that basically when you're in a plane, the engine is on or the engine is off. The only choice is, is what are you going to do? How are you going to react in that moment? And so it's very, very logical about our choices. Abstaining from a choice is a choice. And it's just two choices. Do we or don't we? And it's looking at that in our life in a very simple way that helps us propel ourselves forward in choice. Now, this is another one that really, really did stay with me. I'm afraid I, I don't have the book with me. Um, all my books and things are actually in storage, but I highly recommend this one. Uh, another beautiful story that, um, that was told here on self Discovery, radiotv.com, and it is The Children of the Revolution. A Spiritual Journey to Burma and Buddhism, a powerful and compelling story of heroism and hope by Faraz Dada. Now, Faraz is an accountant with an accounting firm in Mayfair in London, highly accomplished. His wife was from Burma. They decided to go back after the war and just see her home. They got literally blown up on the shore and they ended up at this monastery to discover nearly a thousand displaced children. Um, they were from, some were orphans, some were just sent there for safety, but they had no electricity. Um, many things they did not have, yet they had happiness and love in each other. And in the eight years since then, he has created a school for them, a clinic for them. Uh, they've taken water from the mountain and they sell it in order to provide food for the children and they've made them very sustainable. But what he learned himself and his own spiritual journey was extremely profound and has taken him on another journey in life. Beautiful book, 
um, Children of the Revolution by Faraz Dadad. Please listen to the story. Look at the book. Great gift to give. And this is one that I've done a few times. Is um, Movie Lover's Guide to the Law of Attraction. Now, this is by Brad Marchand. I've had Brad on several times. He's written about, you know, conscious movies and it's about the metaphysics and the consciousness in movies. He um, is like movie critic in the sense that he analyzes a movie. What's it truly saying? What's the message? Is, has the message really come across? Every year we do an Oscar show and he is 95% accurate on his choices. And uh, we look at the movie scene and where the fails were, where the successes were, where the ones, the surprises are. And um, a, a great show, wonderful book. If you're a movie addict, you really will enjoy this. Now this, uh, another one here is We Consciousness, 33 Profound Truths of Inner and Outer Peace. And this is by Karen Noe. And Karen is um, a spiritualist, a medium, a psychic, and um, brings forth a vital guidance from Wayne Dyer and the We Consciousness Guides. And Wayne Dyer was very much about embracing the I am. You know, I am this, I bring forth. And since he passed over, she has actually had a connection with him. And they've now talked to the we are. We must become an I am. I am this instrument to join the we are of the orchestra in life. And it was a lovely show. Do recommend it. The book is lovely. And so it's We Consciousness, The 33 Profound Truths of the Inner and Outer Peace by Karen Noe. And that's N-O-E, folks. And then this is another one, Spiritual Interpretations of Your Dreams by Clementine Maria Govonanetti. And uh, Clementina, she guides the reader through various types of nightly vision and provides them with profound spiritual interpretations and positive affirmations. I really enjoyed doing this show with her. She is a beautiful spirit and uh, somebody that kind of stays with you warm in your heart. And we all want to understand what our night visions, our dreams are telling us and um, what our daydreams are telling us. Because when we have constant dreams it is to show us and propel us forward in a different direction so another good book now this is another one by a lovely lady that i've interviewed a few times that used to have her own podcast as well the wisdom of listening pieces of gold from a decade of interviewing by marilyn r wilson and marilyn marilyn put all of these stories together from the interviews that she had done that had meant something to her and profound wisdom, you know, many pieces of gold that she's received in her decade long career. Um, she's also gone off into another beautiful direction. And I really do invite you to come and listen to her recent show with me. And um, it is on the book, why she wrote it, the direction that she's in now and the way that she's honoring her own beautiful self discovery and what she's learned from other people's interviews, because I promise you after doing nearly 1500 shows myself over the last six and a half years, I have learned so much from the people that I've interviewed. And so it's truly a gift to us as well. Pause in Mastery Alchemy by Jim Self and Roxanne Burnett. A course in mastery of the alchemy is, is like a course in miracles for the 21st century reaching far beyond the earlier programming by incorporating significant leap in human consciousness that has been occurring since the 1980s. And this was a very well received show because it hit exactly what we're looking for. The alchemy, the course in miracles, reaching beyond the old paradigm, the old programming, learning to actually open up and receive in a different way. And a beautiful couple, um, just a, a divine journey and, and one I really do recommend. Now, this is another one where we're getting serious. Why can't Grammy remember me? This is by Dan Perkins. He is a, an affluent author. He, uh, he writes wonderful stories and a lot of um, uh, war type stories. And he writes for veterans. And, but this one is about Alzheimer's and is why can't Grammy remember me? And it's the process of a loved one getting dementia and how it affects the family because really it's still a very much a misunderstood disease. It's a, it's a slow deterioration 
it's a very frustrating one. It's very heartbreaking one. And how do the family cope with it? And that's one of the things that we address here. And this is the re reason that he's written this book. So you can help the children understand why uh, granny or grandpa doesn't know who they are anymore. And plus he's, the, an, an, as I said, a, an avid writer of other stories around the war and, and et cetera. So uh, having Dan Perkins back on again in the, in the future, around this old timers and understanding it more. So a very good book to have. Now this is another one, Deescalate Your Life. And this is by Douglas Knoll. And Knoll's highly anticipated Deescalate is how to calm an angry person in 30 seconds or less. And he works a great deal in the prison system. And his tool to de-escalate people in that 90 seconds, how to bring them down before they get out of control, before the fight breaks out, is not just for the prison system, it's for everywhere in our lives. We all get angry and we're in that moment and the trigger's been you know, pulled and we're out the gate. And how do you de-escalate that person before it gets to escalate beyond control? And when we're looking at the environment today of escalation of anger and hate and everything else, this is definitely needed. So de-escalate your life by Douglas Knoll. And I really do invite you to come back and listen here because it really is something we need to learn now, right now. Okay, this is uh, Paris Nights by Cliff Simon. And Cliff Simon, you may know him if you recognize the actor, he's a television actor. He's best known in his role in the five series seasons recurring villain, uh, Baal in the sci-fi thriller Stargate and the movie and Stargate Continuum. Um, plus he's been in many other things and um, he is a performer. His story was just wonderful. I mean, he was a, a swimmer learning to be an Olympic swimmer and then took a different direction altogether in life. And he's, you know, an actor, but you know, an artist, he's an incredible person and the journey will really, really inspire you. Um, and when he talks about Paris Nights is that he ended up, um, he and his wife performing in the Moulin Rouge and how it was an epiphany to his dancing career before he turned his direction into acting. And uh, he plays the villains a lot because he's, he's got that kind of sexy villain look, but uh, what a warm person he is, definitely. Now we're going on to a totally different type of show. And this is Jesus Saves Bikers Too by Dave Cole. And it's what the church can learn from Harley Davidson. Cole is the social network leader and assistant to superintendent of the Northwest Ministry Network. But he says that if the church could see how Harley Davidson ran its business, they would actually probably do far better in the churches. So Jesus Saves Bikers too. It's witty, it's smart, it's uh, thought-provoking, and he was an absolute delight. So another book I recommend and totally different, right? So um, good to kind of give to someone who just wants something completely out of the box. Then we have The Lone Wolf Canyon by S.C. Sherman. He's written across several genres, uh, pushing the envelope of political correctness with each one. His novels include Leaving Sutherland, a subfield's rather historical fiction, Helen Back, a spiritual thriller, Moxie, a young adult fantasy, a mercy shot, a political thriller. So he's not a one type genre. He really allows a book to come to him, a story to unfold with him. And he never knows where it's going to take him. And it's really interesting. And it's a very really interesting journey how he became an author in the first place. A, 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 lovely, a lovely interview. Um, so many books here with so many different types of genres and things. And I highly recommend, again, one of his books, all of his books, um, The Lone Wolf Canyon. In, and it, that is actually about a veteran who comes back from the war and decides to become a cowboy because he wants to escape all, you know, the stress only to find out that there's a drug cartel in the next farm. So it's a thriller as well. And, um, you know, it's just, he lets it flow. So it's very easy to read, okay? And this one is quite erotica. This young lady, the beautiful young lady, is actually a lawyer in her home country. 
and she's written Behind the Door. It's when a beautiful architect, Lara, dies and a Manhattan lawyer, Mark's hand during a sex game at the summer house in the Hamptons. Carl, Mark's defense lawyer, hires Simone, a psychiatrist, a professor, and an author of books of sexual behavior to help him uh, buttress his argument that Laura's death was an argument. And uh, being a lawyer, um, of course, people didn't expect this of her, quite erotic, and she's an exceptionally beautiful woman, a uh, Andrea Gavazino, that's G-A-V-A-Z-Z-O-N-I, Gavazano, uh, Gavazzini, I'm not quite sure, I'm probably mis mispronouncing this, but um, you know, uh, she's written a sequel to this, which we'll be having her back on again, but a completely unexpected book, a sensual thriller of intrigue, and so something to get your teeth into. And here's another book, um, Remembering the Light Within by Dr. Ron and Mary Hulnick, um, a founding uh, faculty on co-directors of the University of Santa Monica and the Worldwide Center of Study and Practice of Spiritual Psychology. And remembering the light within was how to keep the light within ourselves, which is really, really important. And uh, we can't go anywhere in life, you know, without that light within. It is something that's very important to ourselves and everything that we do in life. And, you know, these are just some of the books that I'm sharing with you here today. Uh, the ones, some of the ones I've done this year, there are plenty more. Um, I invite you to go to selfdiscoveryradiotv.com to the author's kiss and you'll see my authors underneath there. They're also on other genres as well, but if they've written a book, they'll be there. Also, if you go to my discovery uh, bookstore, go into the storefront and look down to the bookstore, you'll see other books in there as well. Another person I recommend is Sam Hawksmore. And Sam has written several books, um, uh, The Cat Blue, and actually, I do have that one. Excuse me a second. I'm going to grab it. All right. And this is a youth genre, but, but I love youth genre because it kind of takes you somewhere else. It's light reading. And he has a beautiful way of taking us into different dimensions, into different worlds. And this is doors that open into different worlds. And uh, it's about somebody who went through a door, got lost, couldn't come back, and his sister looking for it, and her own um, her own place becoming ravaged by war and the, the, the melding of the different dimensions that go through there. And it's always one of courage. There's always a love story in there. And there's always a, a discovery of self that happens in the books. Another one of his books that I highly recommend is The Repercussions of Thomas D. And that one is a, a young man that literally goes through a black hole on the cell phone talking to his friend and ends up in World War II and ends up spilling the beans on the future and everything to the wrong person and literally changes the way the war goes and the Germans win. And so um, a really kind of a what if it had been different. And he's got a wonderful way of, of presenting something and then showing a different face to it. So um, in the last few years, he's written a great deal of youth genre, but he has many other books there that are, that are on other things. He is taking his books next year into audio as well, but uh, wonderful escapism. And uh, you can see all Sam Hawksmore books here. Um, all you have to do is put his name and then you will find them. Or it's, he's also in the bookstore. And, um, and of course, he's my brother. I'm very proud of him. So these are just some of the books here. And, you know, giving a book for Christmas is something that keeps on giving. It gives to the person who's reading it. And then they share the passion of it, or maybe they share the book, or maybe you have a book club and everybody then discusses it. But a book is something that is there on the bookshelf, or maybe you pass it on. I, you know, love all the books that I were given. I was given by my, my guests and I hold them dearly and they will not be passed on. And, you know, to be trusted with them and, and to, to share them. I'm sorry I can't show, show you Rob Shear's book. I've actually lent that to my daughter who is actually working with women in women's shelters and I thought it would be a great insight for her into that world of forgotten women and forgotten children, you know, just people who are thrown away and disposed of and nobody cares about them and it's time we, we do care 
But fundamentally, all of these books, whether they're thrillers, whether they're novels, whether they're self-help books, they've all got this thread here of our own self-discovery, self-enlightenment, of stepping into consciousness, of being aware of our choices and the things that we're going to do. And I can't think of any better gift than to give to someone um, a book of knowledge, a book of wisdom, a book of insight, of inspiration, because it's a wonderful way of passing on that love. So these are just some of the books. If you go back into the authors and you look at the children's books as well, um, there's um, so many authors that I've had in there that are wonderful. Um, I'm going to quickly look into some of these ones here because um, I really would like to just give a shout out um, to, there's Nancy and Nancy has written some beautiful books for children and uh, it's called Nancy Land Books and it's Reach for the Mars, the Moon and the Sky and then there's um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to remember the names here. Oh, there's Sherry, Sherry Think. And Sherry Think has written numerous books about children and they're also extremely inspirational. And I am trying to remember, I have interviewed uh, many, many people. So it is um, just trying to remember everybody's names. But you know, here is actually um, another book which is actually um, called Living Spirits After Death with uh, Laura and Daniela. And uh, you know, L Daniela Norris is, um, she wrote a book on her brother who passed over way too soon and how his spirit continued long after death and that connection was still there. And, um, and it's called Recognition. So it's really a, um, an interesting book. And um, uh, there is, uh, gosh, there's so many books here. Dr. Mameko on Daily Loving Affirmations. There is the 365 Days of uh, uh, gratitude with a positive attitude written by a nine-year-old um, and really incredible. And uh, there is also, um, got the seeds for change, uh, but it's, there's so many here. And recently I have got, um, yep, there's one woman, three men, all about love and sex. And uh, there is the, um, the one I have right now, the Mad Monk Manifesto, which is Monk Yo Rao, who is talking about the manifesto of bringing us back to deity in the way that we lo live our life. And then there's Broadening My Horizon, Living with Epilepsy, which I have on right now. And then it's um, the book Why, and it's simply by Telsey Bossi, and uh, and it's, you know, the question why, and, and it's an erotic book, uh, that question we all ask ourselves, why? And um, there's so many more here, and they're, they're all ones that help us kind of actually understand ourselves. Another book, if you're looking at to do with political and, and ecology and what we can do to empower ourselves, a simple solution, which is by John Bunzel, and it's about the global crisis and how it can help us move forward. And there's the fluidity of being with Mila Popovich. Um, you know, there's so much here. I've just got too many to share everything with. So I invite you to go down the author's page, just click on them and see which ones, you know, resonate with you. And um, I just take read or take listen to their shows because they're here to help us on our way. And we all need that help, don't we? So this is my first show in Christmas Ideas, and this one is on the books. And next week I'll be bringing you some ideas of other gifts that you can give that will be uh, truly profound and um, sensible gifts, not senseless, and uh, getting into the spirit of giving. Uh, we do close for the two weeks over Christmas, and uh, we have a whole new plan of what's coming up in the new year, which I will be bringing to you uh, a little later. And uh, we're going to see some books coming out of our self-discovery community, um, our uh, nonprofit organization of self-discovery radio TV. 
and uh, there's a lot planned for you in the future that is going to be mind-blowing but for now let's address this Christmas of 2018 and these some of the books that I've addressed and uh, and gosh there's another one here I just want to get her in here it, it's um, I'm going to put in the name Paris and it's a uh, here it is. Yes, an African American girl, Laurie Leak, travels to Paris, and that's by Barrette Clementine. And uh, she's been interviewed a couple of times. And no stories are written about African American children traveling. And she's an African American woman who wanted to share this story about how this young girl with her parents travels the world and what she learns from it. So, you know, it's there's so much here. <laughs> can't share it all there's so much here but please come and take a look at selfdiscoveryradiotv.com and cruise along you go to podcasts it will show you all the genres there and uh, just take a listen take a look and um, order the books again a beautiful gift to give because that's what it's all about isn't it it's about giving it's about sharing it's about caring and it's about giving somebody else the inspiration just maybe there's a book here that somebody really needs to hear right now that really needs to read because it's an answer to what they're going through and that book will be just a beautiful gift to give them so folks until the next time next week when i'll bring you some more ideas on christmas shopping i wish you happy shopping and may this christmas season be one that is very joyful to you until next time Bye for now. For more wonderful shows like this, please go to selfdiscoveryradio.com, podcasts and see our lineup. And if you wish to support us, we have a funded button. Please stay tuned for our next show.